Right now at 8, a string of violent attacks in the city of Rockford. Two deadly shootings in just 24 hours. The latest this morning after a murder at a Rockford Walgreens. Plus, the search continues for Rockford's next fire and police leaders. The questions we'll be able to ask those candidates before that decision is made. And later, national holiday we can all get behind this morning. The way restaurants are celebrating National Friday. Live from Fox 39 and your home team, Eyewitness News in the Morning starts now. Hey, take a look at this. Chef now becoming a social media sensation for this turning so cool. food into works of art. Yeah, he, wow. he made these with his bare hands. Look at that little guy. He carved these with his bare hands, so I think that's pretty cool. All using fruits and vegetables. I don't oh, look at that avocado. Some of them are just cool designs. Others are like, I think that's a bird. I would, In I, would, a tree. I, think I think you're right. <laughs> I think that's uh, a that one is my guess. favorite. That's so pretty. Yeah. I want to see the avocado right. again. Uh, maybe this will help parents, you know, get a little creative when their kids aren't eating their veggies. Yeah, this, you, know? you know, it looks easy. Would you eat a little, <laughs> a little dragon? <laughs> Just whip it up for snack time. Totally easy. Oh man, that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, well, happy Tuesday, everybody. It's also a big day for us. Uh, she's not even here though. It's Whitney's birthday. Eh. Of course, she she hates her birthday, so she's like in hiding. <laughs> she is. She's one of those people that she's very low key on her birthday. But no, she's had a couple days off, so we're hoping she has another great day uh, with Sawyer, and then we'll embarrass her all tomorrow morning yes. so when she we'll, comes back yeah. we'll make up for it for sure <laughs> all right let's go down to meteorologist joey moreno joey hoping uh yeah. this forecast maybe will turn around for whitney i just want to ask you elliot did yes. you ever see that TikTok where uh you put a little pressure on the back of the yes, avocado i, I saw and, that for the first time yesterday the pops out kind of a way to uh, get that seat out without taking more no, no, just like <laughs> well i watch like hours of TikTok every day and i've never <laughs> seen that so really right. we'll have to yeah. send it your i wanted way. to see if elliot send gave it, it a try it's a helpful it's a helpful yeah. TikTok this morning but as you mentioned yeah, uh, yeah we are off to a gloomy start to our day but once we get into the afternoon there'll be a little more sunshine as we get into sky track camera you can see over in freeport got the cloud cover uh, we got a little fog still lingering around but once we get rid of this cloud cover that will allow for uh, some sunshine and also for that fog uh, to make its way out of here we've dealt with uh, dense fog throughout much of the morning you can see current numbers out there with interstate 88 our spots along interstate 88 still looking at the thickest fog uh, down to one mile in the Cal 4 in Rochelle, up to 7 now in Sterling, up to 8 in Galena. Now, temperatures in the upper 60s, we got a spot or two in the low 70s, but otherwise we are looking at the shower threat moving out as that low pressure system pulls away, and then also cloud cover starting to break apart as we also see uh, some moisture move out this morning. Fog and showers will be uh, making for a little extra caution for the early drive, but once we get into the evening commute, much better driving conditions. We'll have gradual clearing and maybe a spotty shower or two, but otherwise, Nothing too major uh, for your drive home later today. Let's take a look at our first born interactive radar sponsored by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Uh, so far, we've seen the showers move out. Just got a little fog still lingering around. We'll have more details on what to expect coming up in the forecast. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Joey. Well, happening right now, police investigating a deadly shooting at a Rockford Walgreens, and it comes after several straight days of violence in the city. The shooting happened around 830 last night outside the Walgreens on 11th Street. Police say a man was taken to the hospital after being shot. He died a short time later. We're told the coroner's office will release more details soon. We'll let you know when those come in. Well, this marks the second deadly shooting in 24 hours. We told you about another shooting. This one was around 1.30 Monday morning on the city's west side. 29-year-old man found on a sidewalk. He died later at the hospital. Still no word yet, though, this morning on any suspect information. This morning, a Rockford man behind bars after attacking an elderly Rockford woman. It was in her own garage. Yeah, Kenneth Danger is facing several charges this morning. Our very own Rachel Perry catching up with neighbors who say they caught the incident on camera. The car following right behind, stop at the stop sign, and then the gentleman gets out and uh, proceeds to attack her. Kelvin Milner was coming home from work when he says he saw six police cars outside his neighbor's house. Rockford police say a woman was attacked in her garage on 22nd Street in Rolling Green. Milner's home surveillance camera caught the man just moments before. I watched the video up until the point where um, I got that clear shot of his face. The woman didn't want the entire video shared. It shows a man walking across a lawn, and the next thing you hear is a woman screaming. I didn't watch it all the way through. I, uh, the cops were watching it, and I heard her screaming, and I, I, didn't, I decided I didn't want to watch it. Eighth Ward Alderman Karen Hoffman tells me what happened to this woman and the neighborhood disturbs her. 
my own daughter uh, lives in the neighborhood and her street was shot up twice. So it's personal. She spoke with the Rockford Police Department on safety advice for the public. The police have also strongly suggested that everyone be aware at all times of their surroundings and any persons in their vicinity, especially be aware when exiting your vehicle. Hoffman says home security devices are highly recommended and Milner agrees. That everyone get a home security system, including outside cameras and a doorbell camera. So we have cameras, we're getting more put up, some facing towards our neighbor's house now. Um, and I mean, we have an alarm system, we make sure we set every single night. That was Rachel Perry reporting. Of course, if you know anything about this attack, call Rockford Police. A scam to look out for this morning. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office now is saying people are impersonating officers. That department telling us someone has been calling community members claiming to be Sergeant Newell. Uh, and they tell you that there is a warrant out for your arrest. And they ask you for either bail money or to buy gift cards. So just a reminder here, the Sheriff's Office says it will never contact you by phone regarding arrest warrants. So if you do receive a suspicious call, just block that number. Well, there's still no official word on who will be Rockford's next fire or police chief, but we do have a chance to get to know the candidates before that decision is made. So there are two virtual Q&A forums happening where community members can ask about their backgrounds and any plans for the force if they are hired. You can submit those questions up until July 22nd. We have the email addresses on our website, mystateline.com, and the virtual forums, we're told, will be held sometime before mid-August. Well, State Lion could see more money coming to help people fight drug addictions. City Council just approving an opioid settlement. So this all dates back to 2018. Rockford, along with other communities in 15 states, filing lawsuits against opioid producers, accusing them of contributing to this crisis. One of those Oxycontin makers was Purdue Pharma. They used and filed bankruptcy in 2019 as part of a nearly $5 billion settlement. Illinois would receive roughly one, uh, excuse me, $150 million. Uh, it will be paid out uh, to the states and then from the states uh, to each of the, uh, the counties and the municipalities and the regions that were plaintiffs in that claim. And the, the purpose of those funds when we get them will be to, in, in a nutshell, to address the ongoing opioid crisis we have in Rockford, Winnebago County or, or the, the region. Well, the court will also decide next month whether to accept the revised bankruptcy plan. Well, as restaurants struggle to get by, apparently a new report says people still aren't tipping enough. Yeah, plus Johnson & Johnson stock falling after a warning from the FDA. Jen King has your morning business report. Good morning. Johnson & Johnson stock closed slightly lower yesterday after the FDA announced a new warning for its coronavirus vaccine. It says the shot has been linked to a serious but rare side effect called Guillain-Barre syndrome in which the immune system attacks the nerves. Well, Americans' inflation fears reached a fever pitch in June, rising to the highest level since June of 2013 as the price of consumer goods continues to surge. The Federal Reserve says Americans also expect the price of homes to keep rising with one Year expectations about 6% in June, substantially higher than a year ago. Consumers do expect things like food and gas to fall slightly, but college tuition, that's the highest rating since April of 2019. Well, Disney and big banks have led stocks to new all-time highs yesterday. The Dow ended the day up 126 points and closed just below the 35,000 mark. The Pentagon is close to deciding on a new schedule for completing crucial simulated combat testing of the $400 billion F-35 jet against advanced Russian and Chinese air defenses. Bloomberg reports a long-delayed exercise in a joint simulation environment run by the Navy Navy was supposed to have been completed in December. And a new study conducted by creditcard.com found that Americans' tipping habits hadn't improved much, if at all, during the pandemic. The younger generation found to be the worst culprit, specifically millennials and Gen Zers. The average tip for a sit-down restaurant is 20% of the bill, but that varies among different generations. From New York, I'm Jane King with your morning business report. Well, if you don't have dinner plans tonight, head over to Nicholas Conservatory for Food Truck Tuesday. It's running from uh, 4 until 9 tonight, so you can find a lot of different trucks, all sorts of different foods there. That event running every single Tuesday until the start of November. Well, time now is 810. Take a look at this question coming up on your screen. The first caller to answer, you could win free Wendy's breakfast. So 
On average, how many tornadoes does the U.S. experience every single year? Is it 500, 1,200, or 2,000? I bet you know this one, Joey. I like these questions, and we have plenty more weather questions to come. But as you can see out there, we have a little patchy fog. For Food Truck Tuesday, we have a good forecast. We'll have that coming up in the forecast. Stay tuned. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team, with Whitney Martin, Elliot Grandia, and meteorologist Joey Molino. Now, your first warm weather forecast with meteorologist Joey Marino. Good morning, everybody. Temperatures the past couple of days have been relatively cooler than average. We've topped out in the 70s since Saturday, 73 for both Sunday and Monday. Typically, we see these types of temperatures in the late May time frame, but it was a good break to keep the air conditioner off over the past couple of days. We're going to start to warm up now that we're going to see warmer winds move in starting today and then stretching into uh, the middle of the work week. Taking a live look this morning over by the Park Hills Golf Course in Freeport, still dealing with mostly cloudy skies and also a little bit of patchy fog. But you can see that our numbers are improving across the region. We're now up to six mile visibility in Rockford, four mile visibility in Rochelle, seven in Sterling and also in Freeport. Then we have our worst spot down in DeKalb, still dealing with one mile uh, visibility. So still, I would take extra caution if you're going to be traveling during the uh, mid morning hours. But once we get into late morning, we should start to see uh, significant improvements with the fog and then also start to see a few breaks in the clouds. But as you can see, temperature wise, we're closing in on that 70 degree mark across the region, sitting in the upper 60s. For most, we had a couple of showers track on in overnight as a low pressure system lifted into the uh, into the Great Lakes region. We still have a few sprinkles out there this morning, but mainly most Mostly cloudy skies and dry conditions out there. This low pressure system will continue to lift into the Great Lakes region over the next uh, 12 hours. Once we get into tomorrow, that'll allow our next storm system uh, to move in, and that's going to bring a chance for thunderstorms for both Wednesday and Thursday. But with our winds being out of the west today, we're going to see uh, a little a rise in humidity. So it is going to feel a little muggy today. Humid by the time we head into Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon, and this is going to help fuel the uh, threat for thunderstorms once we get into tomorrow afternoon, some of which could be strong 
too severe. So let's take a look at that using Futurecast. I think this model is overdoing the precipitation for this afternoon, but maybe a passing shower or two uh, could be possible. We'll start, we'll start to see clouds on the decrease heading into the evening commute. So there'll be some sunshine for the end of our day. Then tonight, mostly clear skies will drop back down into the 60s by tomorrow morning. But then cloud cover is expected to quickly uh, increase heading into midday tomorrow as thunderstorms begin to develop across much of Iowa, Minnesota, and then also as we get into Wisconsin. So that's why the biggest threat tomorrow is going to be in those areas. The areas that you see shaded in that shade of orange there, that's an enhanced risk for severe weather. So all modes of severe weather will be possible in those areas. But once the thunderstorms congeal into a line, it'll start to track to the east southeast. And so that's why we're going to see that chance for severe weather late in the afternoon and into the evening hours. For us, damaging winds and heavy rainfall will be the biggest threats, but an isolated tornado or two uh, cannot be ruled out. Then the threat for severe weather does move to our southeast with the cold front. As we get into Thursday, you can see that marginal risk extending from uh, St. Louis all the way to Chicago and then up into Michigan. So we are looking at a pair of active days here once we get into Wednesday and Thursday. Temperature wise, we're going to see temperatures fall into the upcoming weekend, dropping from the 80s into the 70s for Friday. And then you can see we quiet down big time as we head into the upcoming weekend. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Joey. Well, this morning we have some new movie releases you can win. Now let's head now to Collins Corner. Good morning. Well, first of all, we've got the movie that you've all been waiting for, and that's SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run from Paramount. Uh, Keanu Reeves and Snoop Dogg star in this heartwarming tale about a pet snail named Gary who's kidnapped. So SpongeBob, who's this talking sea sponge, and his BFF Patrick, who I think is a starfish, they have to go and try to rescue him. Not to be outdone, Warner Brothers is countering with Mortal Kombat, which is not a re-release of the 1995 classic, but a brand new movie that came out a couple months ago. Uh, this one is about an MMA fighter who is recruited to fight evil martial artists from another dimension. And yes, they have names you may recognize, like Sub-Zero, Sonya Blade, Liu Kang, and Scorpion. I mean, you'll recognize them if you played the Mortal Kombat video games. Next up, we've got the release of Wrath of Man, from, also from Warner Brothers. It's a movie from director Guy Ritchie, which stars Jason Statham as one of those guys with a special set of skills, if you're picking up what I'm laying down, who's hired as a security guard for an armored truck company, but it turns out he's got a score to settle with somebody. I can't say who, because there's a mystery at play as to the who's and the why's and the what for's. Coming our way from Paramount, and they're also releasing an upgraded 4K edition of Almost Famous, the movie that made Kate Hudson a star. She plays a groupie for a 70s rock and roll band and becomes the object of affection for a 15-year-old journalist who's hired by Rolling Stone to cover the band. The movie was based on the real-life experiences of its writer-director Cameron Crowe, who got famous when he snuck back into high school in the 70s and wrote those experiences into a script for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And finally, Scream Factory is releasing a Blu-ray special edition of House of Wax, which you'll remember as the horror movie that starred Paris Hilton and one of those guys from the TV show Supernatural. I'll remember it as in the movie that said it was a remake of the classic Vincent Price 3D movie with the same name, but it's actually a remake of Tourist Trap. Either way, it has a really cool finale involving a fire and a literal house made of wax. In order to win one of these movies, all you got to do is jump on over to our website, that's mystateline.com, and register on that contest page. All right, time now is 818. The Backstreet Boys are back. Yeah, their latest plans right now this winter, where you can catch their new concert series. And next, we're celebrating National Fry Day. See if you can guess how many fries you eat every single year. We'll tell you next.
Well, today is National French Friday. We told you about this yesterday, but McDonald's actually giving you the chance to win free fries through its app. So, uh, but did you know our lead producer, Nora Rogers, giving us a little tidbit here, the origin of French fries, really not French. People in Belgium actually claiming this as their own. So when it was too cold to fish, they'd cut up potatoes, similar uh, size and fillets to fish. I do too. Uh, later, the French started frying foods, selling them on the street. So, oh, French fries were like a street food. Yeah. Uh, estimates, though, say <laughs> Americans eat around 30 pounds of French fries a person every year. I feel like I'm more than 60 pounds. Yes. Okay, so Michelle, I put this in here because we wanted to talk to you about this story. Okay, so come it's, here. Um, the Hallmark Channel's new club, and okay. we talked about this before, I thought, when they first had the idea. They're sending bottles of wine to its members oh. if you join the club four times a year. They're just so sending them, or do I have to pay for it? You, yeah, oh. it's a membership. Okay. <laughs> so they come in three, six, or 12 bottle shipments. You can choose any of those. And then it also comes with a suggestion of Cute. which Hallmark movie you should watch while drinking which wine. I like that. That's do you have fun. a certain wine for, like, say you're going to watch uh, a scary movie? Well, I don't no watch wine. scary movies. Okay. But I do like <laughs> yeah. tequila. But no I, wine. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. When Fall TV comes back in September, I get so yeah. excited, and then it's red wine season. Okay. Yesterday I was watching Netflix with champagne. <laughs> you know. That's okay. so what, what, on yeah. that, what were you watching? I was watching Atypical. Do you guys watch oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. It I've is one. It. I'm, it's one of my favorite shows, and I had no idea cool. that the new season was coming out, and then I saw it, and it was a very strange show champagne to watch just, with champagne. I love the way you live your life. <laughs> champagne for no yeah, reason. Yeah, why not? On a, <laughs> on a gotta, Monday. Sometimes you need it on a Monday. Oh. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> not drinking wine <laughs> today for your good day counter task of the day, unfortunately. No. But, I mean, you could. Every you day could. is fine. We are talking about how geeky we all are. So today is Embrace Your Geekness Day. Uh, so your good day calendar task brought to you by Paper Recovery Services is to post something geeky on social media. So yesterday I actually asked on Facebook for the <laughs> geekiest thing yep. uh, that my Facebook friends and fans love. And I will tell you, I have quite a list. And so no, many people uh, sharing their geeky loves. Though who knows what geeky really means. But Erica uh, said she loves organizing. Do you think that's geeky? I think that's great. I wish I was an organizer. Well, maybe so <laughs> Dave loves Mr. Rogers. Uh, Joey, uh, you might know him. He loves thunderstorm. <laughs> Big thunderstorm guy. Araceli loves composting. That's uh, you know what? Love. Good for yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Gina I mean, North over here, like I want to love all of these things. Yeah. Fidencio loves Star Wars. Lots of people love Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, that's probably that a big game. answer. Uh, Liz, Liz Malone from Halo Cupcake. Just in case you know who she is, so she fun. loves rocks, which okay. I actually thought was kind of surprising because she loves cupcakes and spends so much time <laughs> baking. But she loves rocks. Uh, Patrick likes uh, P.B. Herman, uh, Zach likes Marvel movies, David loves the Twilight Saga. Oh, okay. haven't heard that one in a while. Alyssa Guilty loves uh, Harry Potter. I think I have one more list, I think. Yeah, Elliot, you know him. He loves classic <laughs> yes. tennis matches. Okay, I got some support for this. I know, I don't know if you, you saw. got some people being like, yeah. that's not really? geeky, but you were saying you watched like But yes, from I'll be like, oh yeah, the Wimbledon final in 1940. How did this no, end? 1940. Not, not 1940, <laughs> I take that back. Well, going back farther yeah. than that, Christina loves anything Titanic, mm. Michelle loves yes. anything Lord of the Rings, LaShonda loves the weather, mm. um, and Linda loves birds. And you know what? Embrace your geekiness, post about it on social media, tag us in it. Um, I don't know. I like this question. Nothing. I'm not a geek, you guys. She's, She's just like too cool for too this. School. Too school. Too cool. For Sorry school. to yeah. ask you, Nora. Yeah. <laughs> she likes French fries. You do that. We do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Well, good Tuesday morning. I'm Elliot Grandia. And I'm Nora Rogers. Let's take a look at some of your top stories right now. Police now investigating that deadly shooting at a Rockford Walgreens. This happened around 8.30 last night outside the store on 11th Street. Police tell us a man was taken to the hospital after being shot and died a short time later. We are still waiting to hear new details from the coroner's office, and we'll let you know when those come in. Well, meanwhile, a Rockford man is now behind bars after attacking an elderly woman in her own garage. Kenneth Andres now faces several charges, including aggravated criminal sexual abuse. The alleged attack happened Friday on 22nd Street in the Rolling Green neighborhood. A neighbor named Kevin Calvin Miller gave police that footage from his surveillance camera. So if you know anything about this attack, just contact police. Joey? And looking outside, we are taking a look at our SkyTrack camera over by the Park Hills Golf Course. Still got cloud cover out there, but that fog significantly letting up. You can see the showers that we dealt with this morning pushing out of our area, leaving us with that cloud cover. But we'll start to see a few breaks in the clouds as we head towards uh, midday. But there are still a few areas that are dealing with some fog this morning, down to 5 in Rochelle, 1.5 in DeKalb. So still, I would take extra caution if you're traveling out there this morning. Temperatures closing in on that 70 degree mark in most spots. We'll get into the low 80s this afternoon, 83 degrees with uh, increasing sunshine. So cloud cover giving way to more sunshine uh, by the afternoon. Tonight, we drop down to the mid 60s. We'll stay pretty quiet under mostly clear skies. We'll be a little bit muggy as we get into tomorrow morning, a little seasonable as well. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to see sunshine to start Wednesday, giving way to thunderstorm chances by the afternoon. We continue that chance at the Thursday, then quiet down as we head into the weekend. Back to you. All right, we're going to show some of your viewer photos in just a few minutes. Stay with us on Fox 39. It felt like my legs were going to give out, and then the following day I couldn't walk at all. Right now at 8.30, a new warning about Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine. We hear from patients themselves and the recent health officials still pushing those shots this morning. Plus, a local Boy Scouts camp here in the state line now set to close after decades. The way some people still fighting to keep it open. And later, consider it an early Christmas gift. America's favorite boy band. They're coming out with a new show series later this winter. Live from Fox 39 and your home team, Eyewitness News in the Morning starts now. All right, here's a live look outside. Happy Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? <laughs> it, yeah. is Tuesday. it is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everyone. <sighs> yeah, sometimes, I actually did think it was Wednesday earlier today, but it's not. Wednesday, Whitney will be back in studio after uh, being gone away for over wow. a week. It's been a while. We'll have to celebrate her birthday tomorrow. But happy birthday to Whitney again. We already revealed her age earlier, so she hasn't texted me 
being mad so yet she's just not yet. Watching so us. Well, oh, come on, thank wait. you. Uh, she's, she's probably spending time with her, <laughs> her last morning uh, before she has to come back. But we hope she's having a great start mm -hmm. to her day. Uh, Joey, not the best start weather-wise, yeah. but you said you have something in store for her later for today. Yeah, there'll be uh, some uh, sunshine for the afternoon. Just got to get through this cloudy and foggy start as we're seeing out there. But significant improvements with the fog, those values going up, so uh, won't need to take as much caution uh, going into the late morning hours. But we'll see some sunshine once we get into uh, the afternoon. Taking a live look at her SkyTrack camera over by Park Hills Golf Course. Uh, got a couple of golfers heading out already this morning. Cloud cover sticking around. Uh, but once we get into the afternoon, that's when we'll see a few breaks. The system that's bringing us this cloud cover is going to pull away, allowing for uh, some sunshine. You can see that towards Interstate 88 still. That's been the uh, areas where uh, the fog has been it's thickest. You can see five mile visibility in Rochelle, 1.5 in uh, DeKalb, three up in Janesville, and seven in Freeport. Temperatures right now closing in on that 70 degree mark in most spots, but we got a couple of showers still tracking through. Uh, they've uh, been with us since last night, but they're moving out with that system. So we're going to hold on to the cloud cover for another hour or two before we start to see a few breaks in the clouds. But by the time we're getting to Food Truck Tuesday, we're going to see more sunshine. It'll still feel muggy, but otherwise pretty dry for anyone heading out for a bite to eat. Let's take a look at our first Warren Interactive Radar, sponsored by Rockford Auto Glass and more. A couple of showers tracking through this morning. That'll give way to some sunshine by the afternoon. More details on that coming up, plus the severe threat for later today. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Joey. This morning, we're still waiting to learn more about a crash in Boone County, leaving one person hurt. It all happened around 4 o'clock Monday afternoon, uh, right near the intersection of Woodstock and County Line Roads in Garden Prairie. Boone County fire officials posting this video to Facebook. An investigator saying the crash involved a semi truck and an SUV. One person was taken to the hospital, still waiting to hear uh, the extent of some of those injuries. Well, this morning, a new warning from the FDA about Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine, but health officials claim the shots are safe. Yeah, that's right. COVID cases on the rise right now, especially in areas where people are not vaccinated. This morning, a new warning about Johnson & Johnson's single-shot vaccine. Federal officials warning the shot may increase the risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome, a rare nerve condition where the body's immune system attacks nerve cells, causing muscle weakness and, in extreme cases, paralysis. Loss of sensation in my legs. Um, it felt like my legs were going to give out, and then the following day I couldn't walk at all. Tom Gorman developed the rare condition just a few weeks after getting his J&J &J vaccine. He's one of about 100 cases currently under investigation by the CDC out of the nearly 13 million people who got the shot. It's extremely rare, and it affects mostly men aged 50 and older about two weeks after vaccination. Nevertheless, officials stressing the benefits of the vaccine still outweigh the risks. I'm not anti-vaccine. Um, I... For the majority of people out there, it's, it's a good thing. I was just unfortunate. The side effect has not been seen in people vaccinated with Moderna and Pfizer's mRNA shots, but the vaccination rate lagging. About 65% of those aged 12 and up have received at least one dose. This as the dangerous Delta variant rips through unvaccinated communities. This morning, cases up at least 10% in half the country. In 17 of those states, hospitalizations are up 10% as well. Arkansas, where hospital admissions are up nearly 60%, pointing to the state's use. They have not gotten vaccinated at the same rate as those that are older. They have resisted it. They've put it off. There's also some debate this morning surrounding schools in the fall. Will Illinois students need to wear their masks? The CDC now saying vaccinated students and staff do not need to wear one. The state's Board of Education is looking into this guidance, but one House Republican sent a letter to the governor. He's urging the state not to mandate masks inside the classroom. Don't force these kids in schools to wear a mask. They've been together all summer. They've been playing sports together. They've been hanging out at birthday parties. You know, they've been socializing. They've been going to people's backyards, you know, playing ball. And now they're going to have to turn around in that same group and wear a mask. Well, that new CDC guidance says if school administrators decide to remove any of the prevention strategies like they should remove them one at a time and monitor them closely. Well, here at home, the Winnebago County Health Department's vaccine bus will be at a food truck Tuesday tonight. So that is happening at uh, Nicholas Conservatory 
Uh, the first 10 people to get a shot there will actually win, or not win, but get a $10 gift card. Tomorrow that bus will <laughs> be at the Fairgrounds Boys and Girls Club. Uh, any of those kids, the first 50, uh, will actually win Six Flags passes. Well, this morning, an Illinois Boy Scout camp on the chopping block. The group says they need money and they believe shutting down is the way to get it. Michelle Rave has more on the efforts this morning to save the camp. It's a short term, easy solution, but long term, crippling event. Uh, it, the, the camp has been around since 1936. Kevin Lamb is a former staff member and Boy Scout at Canyon Camp in Stockton. He calls the idea to sell the camp devastating. I still go look back to the most, the most meaningful thing that I ever did was not just teach somebody to swim, to get people over their fear of, of water. It just happens there. Uh, singing songs and skits, and, but it's, it's, a, it's a big learning experience. I was, I was captivated immediately. Dr. Christopher Tumalevich is the president of the Black Hawk Area Council, Boy Scouts of America. While he says this wasn't an easy decision to make, they need to find the funds to settle the previous sexual abuse allegations. It was a difficult decision, but because the, the Canyon Camp came in at a higher number, that's why that uh, consideration was floated. So the Black Hawk Executive Council and the Executive Committee and the board have to decide how are we going to come up with our fair share. Lamb believes there's other alternatives to selling. There are there are lots of other options. They have other assets. They have other monies. They, at a last resort, they could mortgage the camp rather than rather than sell the camp. But Timolovich says their hands are tied. We do not want to close a camp. We don't want to sell any of our buildings if we don't have to. It's not about having one of our camps survive. It's about having Black Hawk Area Council and the Boy Scouts of America survive. Reporting for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. Well, the group says they're hoping to come to a final solution by August 19th. We'll let you know. Oh my God, we're back again. That'll wake you up. Uh, time now is uh, 839. Backstreet Boys making a comeback. We're going to tell you their latest plans for a concert series. Joe, you're a Backstreet Boys fan. Yeah, I like both uh, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. We're going to get to see some sunshine today. Ahead of severe chances, we'll have more details coming up in the forecast. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team, with Whitney Martin, Elliot Grandia, and meteorologist Joey Molino.
Now, your first warm weather forecast with meteorologist Joey Marino. Good morning, everybody. The last couple of days presented a good opportunity to turn those air conditioners off and open up those windows because high temperatures at the Rockford Airport topped out in the 70s since this past weekend. In fact, what we've seen the past couple of days is typically what we see towards the end of May and into early June. But as we see warmer winds move in starting today, we're going to see a more summer like pattern move in that stretches into the second half of the work week. Taking a look outside on our SkyTrack camera over by the Park Hills Golf Course. Still dealing with some cloud cover out there, but we're seeing a significant improvement uh, from the dense fog that we witnessed this morning. Now up to seven mile visibility in Rochelle, three in DeKalb, seven in Freeport, now down to three up in Janesville. Still, I would take extra caution if you're traveling during the mid to late morning hours. Temperatures getting closer to that 70 degree mark. We're going to see temperatures a little bit warmer uh, come this afternoon, but you can see that low pressure system that we've been dealing with the past couple of days that kept the cloud cover, kept us with rain chances and also brought a uh, chilly wind out of the northeast. That's now moving away from the state line, moving into the Great Lakes region. Still got a couple of sprinkles still popping up on radar here locally, uh, but we're going to see dry conditions move in as this low pressure system pulls away. But as it does, another system is going to be making its way in from the upper Midwest, and that's where we're going to focus our thunderstorm chances for Wednesday and Thursday. So for today, it is going to feel a little muggy. Dew points in the low to mid 60s, and then we get close to that 70 degree mark for dew points both Wednesday and Thursday. This uptick in heat and humidity is what's going to help drive the threat for thunderstorms for both Wednesday and then with the cold front going into Thursday. So let's take a look at future cast for today. You can see this afternoon we have decreasing clouds, but I think this model in particular is overdoing the precipitation. We'll uh, keep a chance though for a spotty shower or two. Otherwise, we're going to stay pretty quiet going into tonight. So if you are heading to Food Truck Tuesday, looking pretty dry with uh, some sunshine in the forecast. Temperatures dropping into the 60s uh, by tomorrow morning under mostly clear skies. We'll start off the day with uh, some sunshine giving way to more cloud cover as we get into the afternoon. Then you can see a line of strong thunderstorms making their way in from Iowa. Also Minnesota and Wisconsin. This is going to be the main focus for severe weather tomorrow afternoon and then into the evening hours. And in those areas where those thunderstorms do pop up, they have an enhanced risk for severe weather. Level three of five in the categories for severe weather. So that's where all modes of severe weather will be possible, including a couple of tornadoes. As that line makes its way closer towards the state line, we're going to see the threat for damaging winds and heavy rainfall. So definitely want to make sure you have multiple ways to get watches and warnings, not only tomorrow, Tomorrow, but also into Thursday. The threat does move more to our southeast with that cold front, uh, but still we're looking at a marginal risk for our far southeastern regions with that cold front sliding through could pop up severe storms late in the afternoon and into the evening on Thursday. But once that cold front slides through, we're going to have quiet conditions move in for the upcoming weekend. Temperatures dropping from the upper 80s Wednesday down into the 70s Friday, and then we'll see plenty of sunshine over the upcoming weekend and into the start of next week. Now we have, as we've been saying all morning, a very special birthday that we want to celebrate. Uh, she will be back in studio tomorrow. Yes. But we still, Making a return. We still want to put out the word that it's her birthday today. So happy birthday to, as Elliot likes to say, the Whitney the Martin. The Whitney Martin. One and only. <laughs> One and only. No, we love working with her and uh, we're excited to have her back. She's yes. been gone for a while. It's been a little too quiet in the studio. Yeah. So we need, uh, <laughs> we need her back with us. Uh, she always puts on the jams, too, in the makeup room, you know, gets us pumped oh, yeah. for the show. Uh, this, in particular, was probably one of our favorite memories together. <laughs> well, I figured since uh, you got her uh, going down the water slide, I thought I would take yeah, this one. Yeah, this one, this one was interesting. It was super fun. Galena uh, coming out with us, but those goats uh, <laughs> left quite the mark. <laughs> they, they left their mark in the If uh, catching right. my drift. X marks the spot. Happy birthday to her. I already told Happy her, birthday, her age earlier, so I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> We'll celebrate though. Yeah, yeah absolutely. for sure. We're gonna have, play a lot of uh, have a lot of fun with her tomorrow on a, absolutely her birthday in a day. Hopefully, yeah. she has a great day today. If you have a birthday coming up, just go to mystateline.com and uh, cel uh, celebrate anyone's birthday with sending us a name and a photo, and we'll have those here on the morning show. Back to you. All right. Want to give you a live look outside right now? Your Hollywood highlights. They're all next.
God, we're back again. Well, get ready because another reboot is in the works. This time it's the Fairly Odd Parents. The series will be both live action and animated, apparently, and it's going to follow Timmy Turner's cousin, Viv, and her new stepbrother, Roy. So I guess he wasn't in the series before. Um, so we will meet him now. The show originally ran on Nickelodeon from 2001 through 2017. Oh my God, we're back again. All right, well, if you didn't know Fairly Our Parents, I'm sure you probably know these guys. Backstreet Boys making a comeback. They will be in Las Vegas this winter for a Christmas residency. It's called a Very Backstreet Christmas Party. There will be a series of 12 holiday shows. It's going to be at Planet Hollywood, the resort there on the Vegas Strip. Tickets go on sale Friday. We should go. I'd be down for this. A little trip to you Vegas. have a friend in Vegas. I do. We could join it. It'd be yeah, a little. Let's do it. I, I'm just wondering how many people actually go to Vegas right before Christmas. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot oh, of plenty of people. Oh, it's so nice it's there. Packed. That's the time you want to go. All right, right? we'll have yeah. to we'll have to get more information on that. Also in Hollywood, a classic film actually turning 20 years old. Yeah, plus lifestyle TV. It's getting a makeover. Here are your Hollywood highlights. I need you to delicately take the drywall out. This week, TV gets a makeover Welcome with the launch of the Magnolia Network, edition. run by former HGTV stars Chip and Joanna Gaines. The Lifestyle Channel will feature renovation shows, cooking shows, but you may be surprised to learn that this TV power couple doesn't actually own a TV. When we have to watch television, we do like a lot of Americans do. We watch it on a device or a, or a computer, but, but there is still no television in the Gaines household, and I'm proud to, uh, to, to, to announce it. The Magnolia Network debuts this Thursday. Delta who? Delta Nu. Happy anniversary, Elle Woods. The now classic comedy Legally Blonde turns 20 today. And Reese Witherspoon's co-star Luke Wilson tells me when he said yes, he kind of thought it was just another romantic comedy. I really wasn't taking it that seriously. And then I just remember seeing Reese for the first time, like, come out in her wardrobe and, like, the way she was walking and the way she looked. You know, I was like, this is like a Saturday Night Live sketch. And, like, she's really, like, committed to this. A third Legally Blonde film is in the works. The Emmys have a host. Cedric the Entertainer will MC TV's Biggest Night, September 19th. And the stars will be there live and in person. And happy birthday, Harrison Ford, the Indiana Jones actor who recently hurt himself filming the latest movie, turned 79 today. We haven't even what seen this. What a way to celebrate Harrison Ford's birthday. <laughs> we haven't even, got even seen the second Legally okay, Blonde, so we need to catch up. one is so wonderful mm. that I think I just didn't see the second right. one because I that didn't happens want sometimes. to feel negative yeah, about it. I get that. All right, well, we, of course, have Michelle here showing us all your fun family photos, or viewer photos. You oh, you got it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I got to cure her up here so she knows what these are. <laughs> Our first picture is from Rachel. Super, super cute. This is Amelia at the 4th of July party. She's just living her life in red, white, and blue. I, this is a little cute little white sucker that I 100% will be this parent that we were just going to go all out. 
up. Oh yeah. For any holiday. And and I'll be dressing up. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> cute though. Middle of the week. Yeah, yeah. Very cute. Thanks to Rachel for sending us that picture. Uh, this next one is from Beth. I gotta love this. So I always see these beach photos and think they're on vacation, and then I realize there's actually beaches like yeah, there are nearby. There are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Pearl Lake? Joey's laughing at me in the corner. Here's the deal. I grew up in the suburbs. We just went to the mall. Yeah. I didn't know there was a beach. You're that like, was... oh, guys, you want to go to Woodfield? Yes, right now I'll go. Um, and I do love going to the beach. I just always associate beaches with like far away. All your family, are your favorite memories from a kid are at Auntie Anne's. Yeah, at Express earlier. Really. I started yeah. shopping there when I was like 10. Um, but yeah, I have no idea where this picture is, but it's very, very cute. It's and an probably awesome not as far away as I think as it we is. Think, yeah. Thanks, Beth, for sending us that. Our last picture is from Julie, and this is it's Mackinac Island. Mackinac. I knew I was going to say it wrong. No, but it's, it's an you. awesome place. Yeah, this is uh, it's kind of uh, between the uh, Lower Peninsula and Upper Peninsula. You take the Mackinac Bridge, or you can take the ferry. I actually think you do have to take the ferry to Mackinac Island, but that's a fun picture. It's I such also a cool love, island. she's wearing it right on her shirt, so we don't have yeah. to question where she is. And I'm assuming, if she's watching, they had the best Mackinac Island fudge. It's like you have to do it when you're there. That so, sounds good. Can you yeah. bring me some? Are you going there? Let's anytime? go. Let's just go. Uh, we'll we're go going together. To the mall, then we're going to go get fun. It's going to be a great day. <laughs> All right. We also want to hear from our morning mug club. Today is a good day. Here's why it's National French Fry Day. So we want to know where your favorite fries are from. Uh, we've been talking about some free places you can get them at. Well, good morning. I'm Elliot Grandia. And I'm Nora Rogers. Let's take a look at some of your top stories right now. A state line Boy Scout camp now on the chopping block. Canyon Camp in Stockton. It's been open since 1963. Well, now scout leaders say they need to sell it to cover previous sexual abuse settlements. And the group says they hope to come to a final solution about this in August. Also happening tonight, Winnebago County Health Department's vaccine bus will be at Food Truck Tuesday. It's happening at the Nicholas Conservatory. 
First 10 people to get there, uh, to get a shot rather, will get a $10 gift card. Joey? And we're seeing significant improvements with the fog out there. Not seeing any on our SkyTrack camera over in Freeport. Mostly cloudy skies. Much of the shower activity uh, moving out towards the east with that low pressure system. You can see that we have uh, values up to three in DeKalb. So still dealing with some fog to our southeast. But otherwise, much of the area getting upwards of seven to ten mile visibility. So not seeing dense fog anymore across much of the area. But we're still going to keep chances into late morning. You can also see temperatures now that we're starting to clear up. We're starting to get into the 70 degree mark in Rockford, 67 in Rochelle, 71 in Galena and sitting at 69 degrees up in uh, Monroe. But overall today we're going to get into the low 80s. Cloudy start. See some gradual clearing for the afternoon. Temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer than yesterday, starting off a couple of degrees warmer tomorrow. It's going to feel a little muggy, but continued clearing. So we'll have mostly clear skies as we get into tomorrow morning. Seven day forecast chance for thunderstorms for both Wednesday and Thursday. Just make sure you have multiple ways to get watches and mornings, especially Wednesday afternoon as thunderstorms roll through. Then we're going to cool down a little bit as we get into the weekend. Also quiet down with some sunshine for Saturday and Sunday. Back to you guys. All right, guys, we are celebrating Whitney's birthday tomorrow, a day late, but it'll still be a lot of fun. Uh, she'll be back in studio. We'll, back, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>